السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, have been a long time not delivering my weekly lecture. But today, inshallah, my talk to you is as I have done last year. I call it my accountability to you to try to be transparent during 2019 how far and how much I traveled and visited different countries. The purpose of the end of the year talk today, which I call it accountability, actually is three objectives. First, to the young people who are depressed at home because of the gloomy Islamophobic atmosphere and philosophy of thinking being affected by many problems, get out from the ghetto that they are trying to push you into it, get out from this dark tunnel being designed for each and every one of you to enter it by the anti-humanity, an institution, and the enemies of humanity. That's number one. Number two, at my age, Allah has given me the ability to travel and deliver my own message. And I want you to do better than that. Number three is we have to do something for humanity. We cannot afford to sit and do nothing. The nothing people are the people who do nothing. Okay? And you are not the nothing. You are not the miserable. You are not those people who have no weight in the society or in, for, or in humanity or for humanity. I thank my colleague who helped me to organize this talk today, Sahar, uh, Raza, Fatma Hirsi, and Abdurrahman Nahas. This photograph is me and Islamic Help uh, Country Director with the young people in Tanga in Tanzania. Please, this is, you can join my YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Next, please. My travel was nearly 30, 29, visited 18 countries, and it took me 145 days of travel between different countries at my age. At my age at my age and all of you know by now how old I am I am younger than any and every one of you the challenge here is not the age it is the spirit and I hope that Allah next year can make this 145 245 days can make the 18 28 uh, countries can make the travels 40 travels or 50 travels. My challenge is here and come and meet me because I don't want you to be tuned into the dark tunnel that the anti-humanity are pushing you to go into it to steal the resources of your country while you are there depressed. They get you into drug addiction. They get you into depression. They get you into uh, leaving your religion, forgetting about your culture, forgetting about your values, and forgetting about your morality. No way I will let you to do that. And if you want to meet the challenge, come and meet me and come and talk to me so we all together can do that. Okay, this is my account to you, and I'm saying this because I want every chairman, every president of humanitarian and social organization to be accountable to you, accountable to you, and to be transparent 
in his or her work for the community because the community is the foundation of their work and without community they cannot succeed so 29 travel 18 countries and 145 days These are some of the countries that I have visited. If you remember, I gave this talk last year. The same. Today in English, tomorrow in Arabic. And you can see it. Here about six or seven countries. No, no. More than uh, uh, one, one, two, three, four, five. Maybe 19 countries, as we mentioned before. Between Turkey, Qatar, Kuwait, South Africa, Switzerland, and many 14 other countries have been visited as well. Number of international visits by continent. MENA region which is Middle East and North Africa. Middle East and North Africa. Which include Morocco, Algeria, Libya, Egypt and so on. Sometimes we include Sudan into it. But sometimes don't. Also, MENA region includes Lebanon, includes Iraq, includes Jordan, includes Saudi Arabia, includes uh, Yemen, includes all this area of the Middle East. Clear? This is the MENA region. When we said MENA region, this MENA region, and in Europe, and you can see, this is account. I'm here to put my account in front of you. In spite of the fact that at, I am a pensioner now, but I have to fight to stand up and tell every responsible individual and organization to be accountable to the citizen of the country and the citizens of humanity. And you have the right to question, you have the right to ask, and you have the right to write complaint against me or against anybody who stands on a, on, on a community platform and lead the community. Let us start with the monthly visits. These are some of the cities which I want, no, it's not all of them, of course, Birmingham, Manchester, Bradford, Wakefield, Leeds, London, and others, and others, and others inside. Because there's a local program which you have to look after, actually, and there's international program as we can see different countries, different continents. For you as a community worker and for you as a social worker and for you as a humanitarian worker, you have to not to forget your own homeland. I hope that maybe this year, coming after tomorrow, these six or seven countries will be 17 or 20 or 30 countries as well, inshallah. Be responsible for the country that you are one of its citizens and be responsible for humanity that you are trying to save, protect, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, empower the people who are living with you on the planet. I'm banking on the young people in whom I'm talking to them now and telling them never let anyone to put you on the dark tunnel which will lead you to lose faith in yourself, to lose faith in your deen and to lose your deen or your culture and your morality. Get out, be with the community, Help the community, guide the community, protect the community, and save the community. Whether the community is local or international. February, between Switzerland and uh, Turkey, some people might say, why you keep going to Turkey quite often? Because Turkey as a country is hosting about at least 5 million asylum seekers, political asylum seekers, refugees, and become a big hub for 
empowering those young growing organization, young growing civil such organization, and from Iraq, from Yemen, from Syria, from Libya, from Egypt, from other, from Somalia, from other countries. That's why our duty with our age and the experience is to go there to be with the organization that needs help. We don't want them to do the same mistake that we have done in the past, but we want them to start from where we ended our journey or we're ending our journey. Of course, Switzerland, everybody knows that Switzerland, or especially Geneva, Geneva is the hub of humanity or humanitarian work. As this is my account for the month of February. The month of March again, it was a woman con conference or woman workshop where we trained at least 25 women with uh, a woman organization there. Most of them are Syrian. And other projects, because you see, in Turkey, there are more than 1,000 uh, young Syrian humanitarian and civil society organizations. And they need help, they need to be supported, they need to be guided, because for you, young people, be careful when you work on a conflict zone, you'll be watched by all the different security and the intelligence, intelligence organization. Whether they are sympathizing with you or whether they become antagonizing you. So keep training the young, energetic, emotionally driven organization not to do the mistake. Not to do the mistake, not to do the mistake. In the month of April, again, it is another country with different culture to go and deliver lectures to young people in the university. When you have the opportunity, when you have the time, when you have the skills, when you have the experience, when you have the knowledge, please go and talk to the young people in the university. Because we have to make them the future leaders, not only of their community, but the future leaders of humanity. And that's why, without any political connection, we go to these countries and talk to the young people and guide the young people. In May, I got four, five, six countries. The most exciting one is the, the journey during Ramadan in South Africa in partnership with Imdad Foundation South Africa and UK. Imdad Foundation South Africa and UK took me to Malawi and Mozambique. It was an eye-opener for myself during Ramadan. I spent this time to see the post-typhoon, or what they call the, what hit Mozambique and Malawi last, this year. No, not tsunami, it's a mini tsunami, small one and see how the sea or how the ocean when it becomes angry, it wipes life from the villages and the teachings and others. And thank Imdad Foundation for allowing me to visit their projects in Malawi and Mozambique and thank Islamic Relief for letting me to visit their project actually in South Africa with uh, and during Ramadan. Also there, we made two live stream on the local, what do you call it, radio station and TV station, which was actually uh, very good, not only for me, but very good for the community to interact and listen, to interact, interact with us and listen to our experience, especially in this part of the world. In June this year, another trip 
with a different dimension into Kenya with volunteers from Canada who came to an area called Kalifi near Mombasa and it was hands-on experience between the volunteers, men and women, young and old like myself, who were, who were on the road for about a week or 10 days with them. And thanks for Islamic Leaf Canada for providing us with these facilities to sit down with the volunteers, to travel with the volunteers, and to let the volunteers to be a, a part of the creativity, the creation of the creativity of the organization and responding to the needs of the local community in Kenya, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Thank you. After that, went to Somalia. My heart lies in Somalia. I love Somalia as much as I love any other country. To go to different uh, areas. The purpose of this visit was we were trying to find a solution, water solution. Do we keep digging wells? Becomes out of fashion because it decreases the reserve of water in the area. But we need now to guide our donors and to guide, guide our youngsters to build water reservoir, to build many dams, to build sand dams and huge dams. But this is not going to be done unless we cooperate together and build partnership and manage. Because every year there's flooding in Somalia, flooding in Djibouti, flooding in Sudan, in Kenya and others. And all the water coming from the rain because Allah is very merciful. He descends the rain as a blessing, but we let the rain to go to the ocean or to go to the sea. And the solution now, within, when we are having this climate change, negative climate change, is to start to make water reservoir, to build water reservoir and build the mini dams and sun dams and the proper dam. But we have to work together. Because this project could be quite expensive. Another exciting trip to Bosnia between nearly for about 11 days or 10 days for a group of volunteers from the age of 14 till the age of 68 and 69. Men and women, girls and boys. To see how the people of Bosnia are living together post-ethnic cleansing, which happened between 1992 and 1995. Also to witness the commemoration, the 24th anniversary of the commemoration of the Srebrenica massacre, where more than 11,000 people have been killed in three days by the terrorist groups in Serbia at that time. We don't call them Christian, we don't call them Serbian, we call them terrorist groups. Because there's a lot of good people in Serbia, a lot of good people in the new Yugoslavia, but there's bad people in every country. And those people who did this and killed them mercilessly, United Nations up till now and other organizations managed to discover the remains of nearly up to 9,000 of these bodies. But the other 2,000 are not discovered yet. Some of these bodies or the remains was found in several, seven different locations in the area. So with the volunteers, we were very excited, especially by the motivation of the young Canadian girls whom I learned a lot from them. And thank you for the Canadian volunteers who came, who, are, who gave me, provide me the opportunity to travel with them. And thank you for Islamic Leaf Bosnia team as well. In Nigeria, it was another, another dimension 
of connectivity, make the connection between climate change and resilience, hosted by Nigerian Conservation Foundation to talk to the people. Quality of the people in the room was excellent, as good as the people here in London, Paris, and Rome, and, and New York, and, 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 and. But they are Nigerian. We shouldn't look down at them. We should learn from them. I learned a lot from them. This was in Abuja. Then we went to Sukutu to see the Sultan of Sukutu, who was the Sultan of the whole Muslim area. Then we went to visit some other project with an organization called International Islamic Charitable Organization in uh, Mina, a place called Mina, about three hours drive from, uh, uh, from Abuja. And then we went to Lagos as well to see and to learn and to listen and connect and communicate and pass our knowledge to them as well. In September, we went from Nigeria to Chad. Chad was a longer visit. We got about three at least. One, two, four workshops. Two with two local organizations and another two, one of them with Qatar Charity, the other one with Islamic Relief and Direct Aid and other organizations. To explore the potential of the local community. Chad is a very rich country, very resourceful country, but very poor people because of corruption. And because of the condition both being put on them by other countries to control their economy. That's why we want the youth of Chad and you to discover who is corrupting our country and your country and other, and who is stealing the resources of this country. Our host was the Center of Arabic and African Studies. Okay? Then in the same month, we went to Qatar with done many meetings. Are you changing the slides? During these few days in Qatar, I delivered six talks. It was one of the most successful journey for me to interact with the young people in three universities. Then local community, then, 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 then. So when you go and talk to the young people, the young people empower me and they empower you because they have the drive, they have the emotion, they have the vision, and they want to put them on the right track. In October, we just went to Aberdeen, then to Turkey for the big, big conference called WAF, World Humanitarian Action Forum. This was a dream. And this was 2019 WAF conference, which was attended by more than 500 delegations from 60-something countries and representing 162 or 163 organizations. To talk about the problems facing the humanitarian sector locally and globally. And we thank our partners there, especially Turkish Red Crescent, Al Jazeera, and Qatar Charity, and the Islamic Relief, and uh, uh, Human Appeal, and Penny Appeal, and all these organizations who did support us to make this uh, conference uh, successful. Then we went from there, straight after the conference, to Tanzania with Islamic Help, then to Cameroon with Islamic Help, and in Tanzania, we went to Tanga, and then we went to Dar es Salaam, we went to Zanzibar to see the great project being done by Islamic help in this country. But nobody talks about them. We need to talk about them. Then we went from them to Cameroon to organize a, a workshop for localization in this October month. This is my account to you. You can suggest to me where to go next. Next year, inshallah. In November, I was invited back to South Africa, actually, to organize, be a part of organizing the, another workshop for post WAF, Post World Humanitarian Action Forum, as well as to celebrate the 15th anniversary of Islamic Relief South Africa, which were organized by young people as well. 
excellent performance of the young South African people, men and women. And thank you, South Africa, again and again and again. In the same month, I came back to the first Yemeni conference, trying to bring all the Yemeni CSOs and people playing for organizations from America, from Germany, from uh, France, from uh, Canada, from uh, UK, to come and sit, about, sit and talk about the future, the humanitarian future, uh, and the catastrophe facing the people of Yemen, 22 people in need, in the dire need of help, of help, of help. This was tried to organize this meeting. In December, only also in, 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 uh, in November, there's something missing here. I went to Sweden. It's not, it's not written. Sweden. I went to Sweden at the last few days of, uh, to Stockholm with a local Eritrean. Ah, sorry. You are right. Because it's oh. Uh, from the uh, end of, 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 uh, of, the, uh, of, of November and the beginning of December, I was there in Sweden with a local Eritrean organization who is still suffering from the lack of cooperation and lack of proper networking between different organizations, especially the diaspora organization. Thank you for the local organization there who invited me there. Then from there, it was a high-level meeting with private meeting with you and Ocha to talk about localization and to talk about how can we give the ownership of our humanitarian work to the local organization, not to the UN agencies as agencies. Then to attend the conference of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent, then uh, to go uh, to uh, Kuwait for a board meeting, then to go to Qatar for more meeting with organization, and come back to Switzerland with Global Refugees Forum. This is the first forum is done, is, is co-hosted by the government of Switzerland, the government of Turkey, the government of Pakistan, the government of Costa Rica, the government of Germany. Five governments. In the conference was the president of Costa Rica, president of Turkey, president of Switzerland, uh, I think the deputy prime minister or of, uh, prime minister of Pakistan and uh, a representative from the German uh, government as well, plus the prime minister of Somalia. Here is the message to the Global Refugees Forum. We do not want to salute the aggressor who kill people and at the same time give us some funding to feed them. It is not a part of the humanitarian principles. Stop killing people who don't want your food and your aid material. Then from there, I was invited by Islamic Leaf in Ireland to talk to the young people again. I was very excited by this meeting on the 21st of December this year. I'm first 21st of December this year because I found the future and I found the motivation and they found the zealous feeling in the hearts of the young, young people who are studying in Ireland, in different Islamic societies, originally from Libya, from Pakistan, from Iraq, from, uh, from Kurdistan, from Turkey, from Egypt, from Somalia, from all. They are clear of what they want to do. And they made a miracle. We thought that during this dinner in the evening, we raise fund for the orphans, about 20,000 or 25,000, but they managed to raise 56,000 euro in less than an hour. And this is where the drive of the one penny counts. 
To conclude, to conclude, this is a part of my end of year account to you, to be transparent with you, and I'm inviting you, young men and young women, not to be depressed, not to be sitting at home doing nothing, but think about a big dream and act locally to start applying this big dream locally till it becomes a, a part of the future and the presence of the society. Never let anyone to let you down. This is number one. Number two, all the time, think to work collectively together. Nobody can have the power or the ability to sort even a problem of one village. Be transparent, be clear, be objective, and let the anti-humanity not to depress you, not to make you drug addicts, not to let you having withdrawal symptoms of depression, not to let you to change your culture, your values, your religion. And let us start 2020 with more motivation that we are going to end this kind of era of corruption done by the rich countries when they are stealing the resources of the poor countries. Tomorrow, inshallah, at 6 o'clock, same time, we'll do this same talk in Arabic. Ghadan, inshallah, سيكون المحاضرة نفسها باللغة العربية الساعة 6 بتوقيت لندن 9 بتوقيت مكة المكرمة وجزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته